Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And ah, uh, ha, 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 I'm checking in on you. Ooh, how are you? Oh, I'm sweating my balls off here in fucking New York City. Jesus Christ, the last two times I came to New York, I really, I actually was just like, you know, I could live back here. I like this. This is fucking nice. Now, came back with this fucking bullshit. I don't know what happened to my... I used to stay in this part of the city all the time. I can't even tell you how many fucking rats were running down the street. The amount of goddamn fucking people that go, dude, what's going on in L.A.? Because all they show in L.A. is a bunch of homeless people stabbing each other. I'm not saying that isn't happening. But that, that is not indicative of what goes on when you walk down the fucking street. Um, they immediately go to downtown L.A. They immediately go to the worst thing. I'm just on a random fucking street. Dude, the streets were alive with the sounds of rats running down the fucking street. Like, the only thing that was missing was that fucking jerk-off with, with the flute walking him out of town into the, into the East River or something. Um, I was hanging out with my buddy last night, right? I was on fucking West Coast time. We were sitting in this little park that I used to sit in all the time. Not even, it was a more of like a... Uh, it had concrete, but, you know, it was a place where they actually put benches and they actually let you sit down, one of those places. And... Uh, there were so many fucking rats on the goddamn sidewalk. I mean, granted, the trash was out, but I lived in this neighborhood back in the day. There was nothing like this. Like, even the crazy homeless people were fucking walking down the middle of the street. They were yelling at the rats, but they were like, I am not fucking, I'm not going anywhere near those things. I don't know. Kind of, I like, you know, it's a good thing. Liking where you're at. Um, so anyway, I am. Uh, I got a show tonight in Allentown. That was another Billy Joel one, right? Any any place you go in Pennsylvania, you know, there's some sort of Rust Belt. That guy wrote a song about it, you know. Say goodbye to Upper Dobby. I know that's in uh, Philadelphia. Whatever. I'm in a grumpy fucking move because I forgot today was Thursday and I already did a podcast for somebody else and I thought my podcasting was over. I'd also not had um, a cup of coffee, right? So, I mean, I'm kind of losing it with this, you know, the first 10 days of every fucking month. I fucked it up last month because it was my birthday. I was like, ah, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, I did well for like five days. I started on June 30th. Then July 4th, I'm like, what, what am I? Who am I, you know? Some guy with fucking freckles on his balls. I'm not going to, uh, you know, smoke a cigar on the, July, on, on, the, on the July 4th. On July 4th. So I did that. And then I came to the city last night. And I hit up a buddy of mine. And uh, I sat in a rat-infested fucking block. And smoked another one. And I'm just like, what am I doing? Then I'm walking around out there in the heat trying to find a cigar and it's fucking hilarious like nobody sells cigars but everybody sells vapes weed and 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 whatever else they got going on in there it's kind of funny those uh those weed and vape stores i don't get like why is it like so why do they come with the tokyo vibe you know you ever see like pictures of tokyo like it looks amazing like it looks like Times square you know but these fucking you know but it makes sense because every everywhere over there at least the pictures I've seen, is kind of what this, the, this city looks like. So it, it, I'm going to use this word. It fits in with the aesthetic. Woo! That's a fucking $18 word right there. It fits in with the aesthetic. These fucking weed vape stores, it, they're, they're just next to sort of these bland things. And then they just got like these, all these, this, it's like a fucking tropical fish tank. Like, come on in and get your drugs, man. Um... So we, you know, we kept going into those places. You got any cigars? And I said, yeah, but they had the ones that, you know, the kids buy and take the tobacco out and make a blunt out of it, which, you know, people say this younger generation <clears throat> doesn't want to work. But, you know, when they, they, these younger kids could easily buy a pre-rolled joint and they're still taking the time <laughs> to buy a bad cigar, crack it open. And I still don't quite understand how that works. 
I've watched people do it, but I just I feel like once you break the leaf, like how do you get it back together? And then it's just, oh, you just, I just sort of lick all up and down the fucking shaft. It's great. And then what? I'm going to smoke that thing? Fucking hell. No. Let me get the pre-rolled one that the AI robot fucking licked on with its, with its fake tongue, with the synthetic saliva. Um, anyway, somebody sent me this piece, piece on uh, Robert Kennedy Jr., uh, the left is already depicting him as a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist lunatic. Um, so you know what that means. That means he's good for the people. He's not good for the banks and the fucking, the war guys, you know? Like, I, I don't, they do this, the Democrats do this every fucking election, you know? And they, they're gonna fucking, they're gonna, they're gonna, do a big hit piece on him. They're going to fucking trash him. They're going to ignore the fact that the guy works for a nonprofit and fucking uh, holds corporations accountable for polluting the water. They're going to ignore all of that shit. They're going to oh, the guy's out of his mind. He's into shapeshifters. No, he's saying... Isn't he saying that, like, he doesn't believe the Warren Commission? I mean, that's not too fucking crazy, is it? <laughs> he doesn't believe Saran Saran acted alone. I can get with that. I love how he's a conspiracy theorist, but I can just, because I'm not running for office, I can say the NBA's fixed, but people don't walk around, you know, right now, you know, they'll trash my comedy, but they don't say I'm a conspiracy theory lunatic, theorist, lunatic or whatever. They always fucking do this. Anytime there's somebody for the, for the, you know, I'm not saying who's the best guy or whatever, but like, I love when they do that, you know, um. And look, you expect it from the right because this guy's a lefty. But when the left is doing it, that's when you're like, ah, so you don't want me to pick him. I see what's going on here. I see what's going on. So I'm going to pick that guy. All right, because I'm a rebel. You know, I just bought a new black leather jacket and I'm going to put the collar up and I don't give a fuck that it's the hottest July 4th in modern history. or Whatever the fuck they said, all that scary shit. Whatever. We're gonna, you know, we're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out. Somehow, that's what you got to keep saying to yourself. We're going to figure this shit out by staying the course and acting like everything's okay. And then we, when we can no longer deny that everything is not okay, we will then waste time blaming each other. All right? And then Billy Joel will write a song called We Didn't Start the Fire. And then, then that's it. And we'll just move forward. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little heat exhausted here. Um, anyway, I'm really looking forward to these shows. I read this book. I gotta, I gotta tell you guys, every once in a while, you know I read a book. And then when I read a book, I never shut up about it, do I? Because I'm so proud of myself that I actually fucking read a book. I'd be more proud of myself if I could find my, my little backpack, my pack for backing. Dude, it was literally it was next to me on the Davenport here. I'm staring into my age using old people words. Get your feet off the Davenport. And look at you. Look at you. Go put on some clean clothes. You got stuff all over your trousers. The fuck is the goddamn book? You motherfucker. It's man's search for, for meaning. I think. Victor Frankel. So it was about a, uh, this, this doctor, Jewish guy. The guy survives four uh, concentration camps and then finds meaning in his suffering in order to be able to move forward. Dude, some of the quotes in this fucking book, he said, there's only two races of men, decent men and not decent men. And every group has both. So there's no such thing as a pure race. And he also said, no man has the right to hurt another man, even if he was hurt. Just shit like that. It's just like, Jesus Christ. I never looked at it that way, you know? Man, I, I approached the world as a sports fan. Um, but he, he finds purpose in suffering and all that. It's, it was fucking amazing. Uplifting book and a quick book. It's only like 150 pages, right? So, you know, you know, that's right up my alley. 
You know, my only complaint, the book, not enough pictures. <laughs> um, but uh, so I go to his Wikipedia page and of course, like his contemporaries have to take the piss out of him going like, well, you know, he wasn't really in out. He was only in Auschwitz for four days. It's like that's four days too many in my world. That's four days more than me. And then those other ones he wasn't. It's like, it had to be the most cunty fucking thing I ever read. Well, he wasn't in Auschwitz, really. It's just like, are you out of your fucking mind? The guy lost his wife. The love of his fucking life. He was tortured. He wasn't fed and all that. And he figured out a fucking way how to survive it. You gonna fucking nitpick that? Unreal, man. Is it unreal? I guess it isn't. I guess it, there's always going to be that, you know? Comic has a great special. There'll be some. He's not that funny. All he's doing is this. You know, I guess I get that with the pettiness of, of show business or whatever. And even politics. But you got to think. You know, if you went to uh, numerous concentration camps, people wouldn't nitpick your fucking stats. This other guy goes, actually, the real hero of the book is actually him. I'm not going to lie to you. After a while, towards the end, I was saying, this guy's kind of gassing up his, his, uh, his new... Uh, he came up with this new fucking uh, therapy. So he was definitely selling it. But, you know, I'm selling my bullshit, right? We all are. You know? Like I drag, you know? House, bitch, fucking something, 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 you know? Billy Joel can write a song about it. Sorry, I was just in a car and that song came on. That's the funniest lyric I've ever heard. Trouble in the Suez. And it doesn't really rhyme with anything. And I've always been meaning to look up what the trouble in the Suez. That's one of those songs that people who aren't baby boomers fucking can't stand because it sounds like baby boomers whining. And then when you go to the video, it's only baby boomers watching the song and they're all just sitting there going like, Oh, my God. Like, Billy Joel could give, like, a fucking history lesson. It's just like, he's not giving a history lesson. If I just say Watergate, I can say Watergate, World War II, the Industrial Revolution. I haven't said fucking anything about him, have I? I can't come at Billy Joel. He seems like he went to summer school like me. All right, so I got to stick. He did the work. Come on. Pass him. Um... Bill, are you riffing about a Billy Joel song from fucking 34 years ago? Yes, I am. I live in 1989. It's my safe space. That's where I live my best life. That was another thing I got out of the book, too, was he was, he was talking about how finding true happiness is, is, you know, it's basically the opposite of what they're selling us. I know this is really old and really fucking hacky, but... Uh, you just, I see it all the time on uh, like Instagram and I give into it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, look at that car, man. Wish I had that car. What if I was in that car and I was driving down the street, people saw me in that car, would they think, wow, look at that old bald orange man in that car. Out of all the old bald orange men out there, he's probably got to be the coolest old bald orange man coming down the fucking street. You know, I, I, I give into that shit. And, uh, he was just talking about, you know, the, the, the purpose of a man is to help other people and ease their pain. And it gets you out of your own bullshit. And you're able to fucking move forward. And however you choose to do that. It was pretty profound. At least for me it was. You know. I'm sure somebody's going to write in and fucking break my balls about it. You know, actually, uh, do you know that guy... Uh, you know, they always come up with something, either sexual or uh, stealing money. Um, anyway, all I know is that guy was skin and bones coming out of a concentration camp, and he still lived to be 92. And he takes you through... Did I even already talk about this? That's, that's the catchphrase on this podcast. Did I already talk about this? He takes you through the three levels of going to a concentration camp. The first was the disbelief that you were there. Then the settling in, the numbness of it. And then uh, the disbelief, I guess, when you're free slash the guilt 
when you don't really feel joy because you've lost the ability. You've so numbed yourself to feeling anything just so you can survive. Um, I don't know. Ah, geez, now they're making me feel like the guy was saying he was, he was kind of being the hero of the book because they get out of the concentration camp and he's walking with this other prisoner and they get to this farm and the guy's just trouncing the crops, walking across them and... The author's going, hey, hey, man, don't step on that. And, he goes, and he's like, why the fuck do I give a fuck about this shit? <laughs> you know? I just had four fucking years of my life taken away. I lost all my fucking relatives. You gonna give a fuck about these snow peas? And then the author's like, hey, man, like, you know, these snow peas, you know, somebody planted these. and blah. Somehow he was able to maintain um, his dignity in it. And even if he exaggerated, it was very, uh, very uplifting book. And uh, those uplifting books, they're, they're fun to read, but then it's, it's hard to apply it in life. You know what I mean? Because you just sit there and you walk down the street and then you got this goofy smile on your face. And then the person walking towards you thinks there's something wrong with you. You know? You, you kind of have to be a little guarded. You can't be walking around like, hey, how are you? People start looking at you like, I'm good. What, what's your fucking deal? Like, what do you want? What are you trying to sell me? Nothing at all. I just read an inspirational book. Well, that's good. Why don't you take that book and shove it up your fucking ass? All right, and back to reality. Evidently, we are back outside again. Um, so anyway, I got Allentown tonight. Say goodbye to Allentown or whatever the fuck he sings. Um, Allentown, Gettysburg, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia. Lake Erie, Buffalo, fucking Rochester. I fucking ate my balls at every comedy club in the fucking East Coast. That'd be funny to fucking sing that song, just naming all the clubs you bombed at. Go Bananas, Caroline's, Rascals, Stress Factory, Comic Strip, fucking Cellar, Boston Comedy. Bill, are you losing your mind by yourself? Yes, I am. I am, because as much as I'm shitting on New York, I do fucking love it. And I do miss it. And uh, this little hotel, boutique, boutique, boutique hotel that I'm staying at, if they had a rooftop deck right now, I would go up there. I would go up there, and I would look at the city, and uh, I don't know what it is. So the city is still exciting to me to be here and be like, you know what? This is fucking amazing that I'm here. And then a rat runs across your foot and you're like, I got to get the fuck out of here. This is like a bad 80s jokes, but there were so many fucking rats last night. I was like relieved to see a roach. <laughs> <laughs> I was hanging out with Josh Adam Myers and I was like, that fucking roach is the most comforting thing I've seen in the last 40 minutes. Like, dude, I swear to God, when the shit hits the fan, New Yorkers are not going to starve. There are enough fucking rats, fat fucking rats. These rats are fucking living. I was so fucking annoyed with the amount of rats on the street. There was actually one in this box with this stupid gray furry ass up in the air. And I fucking kicked the box and another one ran out right by my leg. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? I had high tops on. <laughs> Oh, man, I would just love to go down the street with a fucking BB gun with CO2 and just like, that's what they need to do. But people aren't responsible enough. Like that's what all these guys that play fucking paint gun. You know, you bring them in there, you pay them a nominal fee per hundred rats that they fucking kill. Oh, they would have a fucking ball. They get to dress up like army guys and pretend they're in special forces and then you send them down the fucking subway tracks and they feel like they're in Delta Force. They, they this, You'd get those fucking cunts down on Wall Street to do that. They'd be down there with their manicured fucking nails, you know, with like probably equipment even better. You know, than what the fucking Navy SEALs have because, you know, they, they're, they're clients of the fucking Illuminati. Oh, geez, Bill, you're just going all over the place with this, aren't you? Yeah, I am. 
I think I am. I think I is. Um, and just have them fucking, just kill a bunch of them. Don't kill all of them because they must serve a purpose. You know what I mean? They are a part of nature, but they are fucking, they're, you know, they're running wild this Saturday night. Um, so anyway, I got, I got two new fucking bits, two new ideas, two new ideas that I want to fucking try. And uh, I'm going to see how I'm, I'm doing tonight. Like if I get on stage and I'm feeling it, you know, if the fucking knock knock jokes are flowing through me, I am 100% going to, uh, I'm going to try it. But if it isn't, if it's feeling a little tight, you know, like Tom Cruise, ah, it's no good, it's no good. Fucking shoot the goddamn guy, Tom. Look at Tom Cruise again. Again, he's got another one. Another one. Wait, is he our country's Jackie Chan as far as like doing stunts? But I feel like Jackie Chan was always getting hurt. You know what I mean? Like breaking his ankle and then fucking rubbing his forehead and shit. Jackie, Tan- Jackie Chan took some fucking bumps. But Tom Cruise. You see that fucking picture of him sitting on, just sitting on top of that building? With that smile on his face like he's on a park bench feeding pigeons? It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> It's fucking unbelievable. Um, there's no way that guy has life insurance. There's just no fucking way. Or what is his premium? You know what I mean? So what do you like to do? Uh, my own stunts? Could you describe them? Well, this next movie, they're going to duct tape me to the side of an airplane. And it's going to take off and fly the pattern. Oh, yeah? Is that it? Nope. I'm also going to learn how to fly an A-star. Nose it down. <laughs> um, Lunatic. I feel like he, he does like a Red Bull stunt. Every fucking movie now. It's, it's fantastic. And dare I say, the man is single-handedly saving like people going out to the movies. Top Gun, now he's got like fucking uh, Mission Impossible Part 19 coming out. Like, you're not going to go see that? You're going to go see that. Um, ah, fuck. I got to go down and do my rides here to go to Allentown. I'll finish this in Allentown. All right, I'm back. I'm not waiting till Allentown. I'm going to finish this. I figured out they did have actually roof access, and now I'm sitting here up on the roof. I didn't bring my sunglasses, so I might sneeze a couple times. Like, Christ, who broke this table? Can't have anything nice. You know, if somebody breaks it, they don't fucking say anything. They don't give a fuck. Would have you said something, Bill? I'd like to think I would. Oh, you the hero of this novel, Bill? Are you the guy saying don't step on the snow peas? Fuck, it's bright out here. It's a weird part of the city. Bunch of new shit. Hang on. <laughs> That's going to get me kicked off. Sir, there's no sneezing up here. Um, anyway, um, I kind of forgot I had to do a podcast today because I, I went up and I did uh, Chaz Palminteri's podcast. Um, uh, was an absolute thrill to meet him. Got to talk to him. Uh, I was so amazed that I was actually honest thing that I, I didn't ask him enough questions about, uh, a Bronx Tale. The only thing I talked about was I talked about how much I loved that bus that Robert De Niro was driving because it had all those fucking extra windows and how they don't build shit like that anymore. Out of all the fucking things I could have asked him, that's what I asked him. You know? That movie still ha- it has one of my favorite cars of all fucking time. It was a 66 or a 67 Cadillac Coupe de Ville with the four headlights, you know, Two on each side, stacked up on each on top of each other. He had one fucking fire engine red. And he just backs it up to his hideout. Oh, someday. No, I'm not gonna own one. I'm I'm gonna rent them. That's my new shit. My my lovely wife cured me of that, thinking I had to own these cars. I don't need to own these cars. I just need to find someone who has them, and drive them for a weekend. You know. Or what you do is you're that guy, you have one, you drive it around for a little bit, you sell it, you get something else, then you sell that. But my thing is I immediately fall in love with shit. 
and then I want to redo the whole thing and fix the whole fucking thing. And then, you know, keep it under a tarp and all of that shit, I, I, you know? I'm like a chick whose dad didn't stick around. You know, just falling in love with every sailor that comes down the street. <laughs> sailor Bill? What is it, the 1940s? He's the boogie woogie bugle boy, company B. Let me, uh, let me do some fucking reads here. The Andrews sisters, if you're wondering. That was a big thing. The Mills brothers, the Andrews sisters. There was a lot of... Uh, Everybody thinks the Jacksons were the first ones, you know? Or the, uh, who, 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 who were the Mormon ones? The Osmonds. Nope. Mills Brothers, Andrews Sisters, the Kowalski Twins. All right, I made that last one up. All right, Simply Safe, everybody. You know, when an intruder threatens your home, every second counts. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, just picturing... Somebody pushing against against the doors. The guy's coming through like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. And, Go out the back! <laughs> it's why I am so excited to tell you about the latest innovation from Simply Safe Home Security. It's called 24-7 Live Guard Protection, and it's made possible only by Simply Safe's new Smart Alarm wireless indoor cameras. Now with a fast product monitoring plan, if an intruder breaks into your home, Simply Safe monitoring agents can actually see, speak to, and deter them through the camera. Hey, what the fuck are you doing? Wow. Warning them that they're being recorded and that the police are on their way. It's a game changer in home security. Well, yeah, that would, that would freak anybody out. You know, there's going to be one in your robbery crew. That's bullshit. It's pre-recorded. Yeah, what color shirt am I wearing? Fuck, it's real. Um, the new camera is also the only indoor security camera that can trigger the alarm and instantly deter intruders with a built-in siren. And it's advanced motion detection and vision. Uh, AI can sense the difference between potential intruders and pets. Oh, God. Now you're going to get furries are going to start robbing houses. 24-7 live guard protection and the new smart alarm indoor cameras uh, work seamlessly as part of the entire Simply Safe security system to keep your whole home safe from break-ins, fires, flooring, and more. With Simply Safe, uh, professional monitoring costs under a dollar a day, a bargain for the for the peace of mind it provides. Right now, my listeners can get 20% off any Simply Safe system when you sign up for fast monitoring. This huge offer is for a limited time, visit simplysafe.com slash burr. That's simplysafe.com slash burr. Um, all right. Well, people, I got to wrap this thing up because uh, I got my ride coming to go out to Allentown. And I'm going to find out what the fuck Billy Joel was so goddamn excited about. Why am I making fun of Billy Joel? I love Billy Joel. You know? You say I love you. When, when I said I love dance forever. Mm-hmm. Um, Liberty DeVito, come on. All right. That's the podcast, everybody. Um, thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful weekend, you cunts. Enjoy the music picked out by the always fabulous Andrew Themelis, and then we'll have a bonus episode of the Thursday afternoon just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. You know what's great about being up on a roof? There's no rats up here. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Byrne. It's the Monday morning podcast for Monday, July 6th, 2015. How fucking are ya? What's going on? How was your weekend? Did you have a good time? Did you blow off your fucking fingers? Um, did you enjoy the 4th of July? You know, first of all, for right out of the gate, right out of the gate, I want to thank everybody that did some dumb shit with fireworks and had the presence of mind to fucking make a YouTube video out of it. You know, so guys like me could just sit there. I was laughing my ass off last night. I went to bed and I was watching people shooting bottle rockets out of their ass, having Roman candle fights, seeing somebody take one to the face. Do you know some guy in Maine lit something off on top of his fucking head and he died instantly? 
They were like, he lit off. They said some a mortar or <laughs> something fucking insane. What what kind of you know what kind of a fucking asshole would do something like that? He must have had it. There's no way. Everybody knows once you get up to anything like a pack of firecrackers on your head, you're like, that's that's funny. You're gonna fucking kill your eardrums and you know, but you're gonna survive. But what what he put an M80 in his mouth or something? Well, I don't know, Bill. You fucking brought it up. All right, relax. Let's just look up. Main guy dies. Fireworks. All right. Man shoots off firework from top of his head. Dies instantly. A 22-year-old man was drinking and celebrating the 4th of July. Happy birthday to America. Dude, put it on my head. Happy birthday to America. I'll fucking light it. Happy birthday. Wow. Michael. Oh, my God, somebody call an ambulance. Um, That's how it went down. 22-year-old man who was drinking and celebrating the 4th of July tried to launch a firework from top of his head, killing him instantly. Authorities said. Authorities said. You got to be an authority to say that somebody's fucking dead after they light something off on their head? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Clear clear the way. Yes, yes, he is dead. Well, they kind of knew that. He has brains all over the sidewalk. Watch your mouth, woman. Watch your mouth, woman. It's one of my favorite quotes in sports over the last fucking, I don't know how many months, six months. Watch your mouth, woman. When that woman called, uh, asked LeBron what it was like to be a punk-ass bitch, and then that guy's going, watch your mouth, woman. Watch your mouth, woman. And, you know, you would think that the broads would have had such, would have fucking difficulty with it. Like, you know, I realized that she said something derogatory to, towards him, but that's no excuse Go change your bra, lady. All right? I love that they didn't say anything because even they knew. Even they knew. They're like, all right, yeah, that bitch was out of line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking shit today. Um, they won't say what kind of firework it was. All right. Apparently, he thought that was a great idea. Yeah, just when you died in a stupid fucking way, when somebody starts it off, when they start your eulogy off with apparently... You know, apparently this guy thought uh, sticking his head in the garbage disposal was, uh, you know, going to give him a good buzz. I mean, I'm sorry to bring it up, Claire, but, you know, how did he even get it in there? Hallelujah. Um, His friends said they thought they thought they dissuaded him from doing it. The next thing they knew, he ignited the firework and he was killed instantly. What the fuck did he shoot off? There was no rushing him to the hospital. There was no Devin left when I got there, said 25-year-old Cody. Jesus Christ, the names of this generation, huh? Devin, Cody, Jeep Wrangler. Uh, Devin was the kind of person who would do something stupid, absolutely. He was the kind of person who would pretend to do something stupid to make people laugh. Well, he wasn't faking it. Um. All right, it's the first fireworks fatality since they legalized fireworks January 1st, 2012. Well, he just fucked it up for the whole state. It's bad enough everyone's on heroin. Now you're going to give them fireworks? I mean, what next? Does ISIS get their own juice store? Come on, people. Over 18% of bottle rockets are shot out of people's anuses in this state alone. This needs to stop. Woo! That's going on in Main Street right now in Maine. Hi, do you know me? Of course you don't. I'm your regular housewife here in Maine. My son is on heroin. My other son shot a Roman candle up his ass. I'm sorry to be graphic. He was trying to shoot it out of his ass, but apparently... It is excitement. Well, who's kidding who? I mean, in order to light the wick, you got to be able to see it. So I don't know how these things were done. When we were kids, we just, we lit them and we ran away. We hid under our desks. That's what we did. Devin was a great person. Um, and in Jer- New Jersey, a 52-year-old man blew off a large piece of his leg 
below the knee when he set off a tennis ball sized firework in Montana. Montana? Montana. A 32 year old man was killed at his Billings home in a fireworks accident involving a mortar tube. All right, at least there was some sort of mortar round. I mean, mortar round, I mean. First of all, when you start lighting off shit where your neighbors start screaming, Incoming! You know, what What do you think is going to happen? Let's look up a mortar tube here, everybody. I'm learning about fireworks through the death of my fellow Americans. Um, I spelt motar. All right. Firework mortar tubes. How about some images? Let me see what the fuck these things look like. Is there some sort of... All right, all I see is army guys. Yeah, that's not good. You know, when when the shit you're shooting off... Oh, there we go. Well, there's one that looks like a little barbershop thing. What a fucking dope. He shot that off his head? You know what probably happened, I would guess, is that there was some sort of discharge from the bottom end of it. In the concussive force. But it seems like there was no Devin. He fucking blew his head off. Oh, Jesus, what a way to start. I had such a wonderful weekend. Um, I didn't mean this when I was talking about funny shit. I was just talking about, you know, people having Roman candle fights. Come on, we all did that shit, right? That is ba- that is the evolution of all weaponry. All right? Anything that has an explosive device, anything that, that uh, it's explosive device, anything that, that fucking blows shit up, you just, you start, or you, anything that you can shoot, at a target, it always starts simple. Let's light it off. You know, let's let's point it in that direction at the trees, right? And then what? Then you move up to uh, let's torture some insects. Uh, let's shoot a bird, and eventually, because you know the way human beings are, that we always try to top one another, and we get bored which is the reason why we went from walking to the horse to the car. <laughs> I'm really in deep right now. I know. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Eventually, you're going to move to the, the, the ultimate prey, the human being. You know? Something that can think the same way you do. Something that may have done better in math than you did. You know? That's the challenge. This person passed algebra. I did not. We're both trying to kill one another. Is, you know... First, outside, inside, last, going to come into play here when we're out in the woods. Our opposite angles being congruent. Is that going to be the death of me? Or do I just have that extra something? Do I want it a little bit more? Am I able to block out the fifth commandment? Do I have such a strong religious background that I can hear God's voice in my head telling me that I'm right? Telling me to deliver that animal. It's not even a man anymore. It's a fucking animal. Deliver that animal in the express lane to its maker. Right? Do I have that? I mean, it's inevitable. That's personally why I don't fuck with fireworks. I don't fuck with fireworks because I know that I am scatterbrained and I get bored easily. And I have 10,000 fucking hobbies. And eventually, lighting it off from the driveway is not going to be enough for me. Okay? I have neighbors. I have neighbors that I get along with. Maybe I'm bored with the fact that I get along with them. Maybe I want to start. Maybe some days you just wake up and you just want to start some shit. And you just happen to have some fireworks that don't just blow up. They, they, They go way up in the air. And you want to shoot somebody, right? <clears throat> Anyways, uh, my condolences to anybody uh, who knows somebody that died. No, I don't have any condolences for the people that died because you're fucking dead. And you're either dead or I think you're in a better place. Because someone who's dumb enough to blow themselves up on the July 4th weekend with their own goddamn explosives, I don't think ever had the brains to really hurt another human being knowingly. I never knowingly lied knowingly hurt another fucking human being. I mean, honestly, if you're that fucking stupid, obviously you could go out and you could hurt somebody, but, you know, do you really have the mental capacity to understand, you know, your actions? 
I mean, it's got to be one of the dumbest fucking things you could ever do. Take something of that level. You know what it is? I really think it's the fucking, well, they don't, there's no video of it. I was thinking this is the YouTube generation where, you know, everybody's basically on TV as that fucking skinny blood diseased cunt who painted the soup cans that everybody flipped out over. Andy Warhol, one of the most overrated, overrated fucking artists of all time. All right. I almost said I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. That fucking jerk off drugging up people and banging them in the ass and then fucking drawing a soup can. I mean, if that's an, if that's an artist in your world, then you know what? There's a lot of artists in prison right now. <laughs> They're fucking pasty jackass. You know, he was the original hipster. You know? Didn't have the balls to fucking strike out and do something new. He just sort of mocked and just, just, uh, by the way, did anybody see the last two episodes of the comedians? Huh? Did anybody? With Josh Gad and Billy Crystal? I fucking love that show. And uh, this is a mini spoiler alert. Basically, Josh gets caught talking shit about Billy Crystal and his act. And uh, then they still have to do, they got to do promos to do the upcoming, dude, the fight that they fucking have is great. And um, Billy Crystal's character makes fun of Josh's like fucking hipster friends in such a fucking just beautiful way, eloquent way. And just really sums up that whole when your creativity is just mocking whatever exists it's such a pussy place to create from because at some point, that's what I always do. Whenever I watch somebody like remember one time watching somebody, they went on, on TV and they just mock the art of stand up. you know, which on, on a certain level was funny was basically doing all the, I don't know. What is, what is the word in the industry? The tropes, the hacky fucking, you know, setups and all that type of shit did all of that. But, you know, after a couple minutes, it's like, okay, I get it. I get it. There's some tried and true fucking paths that you can walk down as a comedian. All right, if you're so adept at seeing that shit, why don't you show all of us the new road? And that's what those hipster cunts never do. They never, they don't cut, they don't carve out any new ground. They're just stomping all over shit that's already been done, making fun of it. So I actually, you know, it's weird to me. It's because there's so much of that. During this period of time, you know, like whenever in 20 years from now, when this generations of directors makes their fast times at Ridgemont High, they're fucking uh, dazed and confused. You know what I mean? No, actually, fast times at Ridgemont High took place in the 80s. So that was actually very current. But I'm just saying how, you know, when the 90s, the 70s became nostalgic and you made fun of all the clothes and the fucking hairstyles and all that. In the 2000s, then people made fun of the 80s, and now people kind of mocking the 90s. What are you going to mock now? People mocking the decades before, like that's what people did in this. There's got to be something. I know what they'll do. Let's see, what will they do? They'll do uh, DJ music. I'm being too hard on this generation. They got their own stuff. They got meth. Every generation has to have their own drug, by the way. You know? And heroin. A little bit old. Something old, something new. Something borrowed, something blue, right? So what do you do? They, they get the meth. That's their new thing, right? The old things, heroin, something borrowed. They're mocking all this shit and something blue. That's when they fucking OD and they don't have any oxygen in their blood anymore. Jesus Christ, Bill. What are you doing? Poetry over here? Um, I'll tell you right now, that was a solid 15 minutes and 15 seconds of absolute horse shit. And you know what? You sat there and listened to it. That's what you're doing today? Two days after the, the fucking birthday of America? When we kicked England's ass? Jesus Christ. Fucking England. Isn't it amazing that that little ass fucking island, that there was full of so many fucking evil white people that they could actually, they actually kind of took over the world for a while. Well, actually, there was way less people, though, wasn't there? You know, most of the places they went to, you know, they they weren't uh, 
they weren't as advanced, right? This is where a white guy gets in trouble for saying some racist shit, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to say that, you know, your boats weren't as good as their boats. I wasn't there, okay? And in a lot of ways, cultures that were considered primitive, if we continued to live that way, I want to ask you, do you think that the planet would be in the, 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 the polluted state that it is? I don't think it would be, but I'll tell you this right now, I would already be dead. I would already be dead, you know? Which for me, selfishly, I'm glad we continue to advance and pollute the fucking world, you know? But that's just a selfish fucking move. I should, I should have said, like, you know what? I wish it stayed the same, and I died of a ruptured appendix when I was 12 years old. Under a stack of blankets, sweating in a fucking log cabin. Log cabin, too advanced. Too many trees in a hut made out of the skins of the animals that I ate throughout my life. My life? I was going to say my lives. My life. <clears throat> I was actually trying to think. The, I, I was watching something the other day. And uh, I've been doing this weird thing where I fucking start to nod off watching TV and then I wake back, back up again. And then I start thinking, like, did I just watch that or did I just dream that? And then I always do the math. And I was like, that is way too fucked up to have been on television. I must have just been dreaming. And then I never have the presence of mind to fucking write it down. You know what I mean? I'll tell you what would be fucking insane is if you could actually make a movie that made people feel like they were dreaming, right? But you knew you were dreaming, but you couldn't wake up. Am I describing a coma right now? Am I awake? Can you guys hear me? Hear me? Hear me? Um, <laughs> the closest thing to that would be, I guess, would be movies like Jacob's Ladder. Jacob's fucking Ladder! That movie was fucked. That movie's still great. I watched that the other day. Very underrated movie. Starring uh, the guy from Shosh, Tim Robbins. The guy who used to be married to Susan Sarandon. Oh, crushed two names in a row there. I saw Susan Sarandon recently in a movie with, uh, I want to say, Melissa McCarthy. I don't even, I don't remember. All I know is she was fucking hilarious. Oh, it was Melissa McCarthy. She was fucking hilarious. Fucking hilarious. Um, as was Melissa, as always. So anyways, speaking of ladies, luck be a lady tonight. You won the Ladies World Cup. You stuck that ball in the motherfucking goal. And you won the World Cup for the third, third fucking time. The fucking men haven't even won it once. It isn't fair. It is not right. Why do only the ladies win the fucking World Cup while all the guys got their soccer balls on ice? Sorry. Um, the ladies, World Cups, I actually fucking really got into it. And by really getting into it, I kept forgetting it was on. But whenever I saw it, I kept going, you know what? I'm going to watch this. I saw Japan versus Australia. I, Japan obviously won that one because they played the ladies in the final, right? You know what? The fucking women had, um, the women had, what, three goals in the first, four goals in like the first, I don't know how many minutes like five minutes or something like that. I missed it, of course. I was out, uh, what was I doing? I was playing drums. You know what I mean? I was doing that shit, and then I fucking came back. That's what I do. I looked like a fucking eight-year-old. I should have died when I was 12. What am I doing here? Walking around like a big kid. You know, I, I'd have a, I should have a fucking pacifier, the way I live my fucking life. You ever see those weirdo guys? You know, they can't let go of their fucking childhood Remember on Opie and Anthony one time we were watching these things and they fucking walk around in diapers and their mother treats them like a big baby. Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? That's the one good thing if Hitler lived. The one good thing if Hitler lived, people who want to be adult babies would, would have been exterminated. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only good thing. That would be the only time Hitler got it right. You know what I mean? 
that you take out child molesters and you know beyond a shadow of the doubt they're guilty you got the guy dead to rights laying in a fucking playpen playing with a mobile mobile what are those fucking things that hang over your head shell exxon what do you call those fucking things a mobile a menorah a menage what the fuck is it called you know what it is the things that hang over and the kids look at it because they're having like a fucking acid trip dude that would be the ultimate drug don't worry ladies i'm gonna get back to the women winning the soccer i got a lot to say about that or football as they call it around the world that would be the ultimate fucking drug is if you could take something that erased temporarily temporarily erased everything you've ever learned in life and you could go back to being a baby again like the first time it opens its eyes and you're just staring at a chair like what in the fuck is that is that my mother is that edible or you know what i mean like <laughs> cuz i heard when babies first open their eyes, it is, it's like an acid trip. When they're taking in all the colors, light, and every, they don't know what the fuck. They don't know what they're fucking, they don't know what their own hands are. Sit there staring at their hand. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the wonderment of that? That's why, that's why babies need diapers. Because they're, they're, they're on such a trip that you, if you could fucking do that and you looked at every, no, you shit yourself because you don't, you don't even know what a toilet is. You've never been teased for shitting yourself. You never even smelt the shit. You have no fucking idea what it smells like. You just have to shit and you shit. You know what? That's how I do it, right? You're fucking in the zone. You're just burying threes like Steph Curry, except you hit all of them, where he only misses like two out of a hundred. But you bury all of them because you don't know that it's fucking practically impossible. Tell you right now, if I was running a basketball team, I'd sign a baby. You know? Get him up on his feet. Just get him up on his feet. Okay? Keep feeding this kid. All right? This is the new triangle offense. Okay? We got the fucking baby right at the point. We're going to keep feeding. Keep working it around to him. All right? And, and kid, kid, over here. Hey. Yeah, over here. You just keep launching it. Everybody under the fucking, you just keep fucking throwing it up. Right? Be like when the Nuggets decided not to play defense and they thought that they were going to have the first 200-point game. What am I talking about? Ah, fuck you. I got an hour to fill here. I don't have any fucking advertising copy, so this is just going to be me just running my fucking yap for as long as I can. Um, all right, so back to the ladies, the ladies of women's soccer. These soccer-playing human beings that have the, the, the lady bits. All right? Um... So they scored four goals. Of course, I missed all the fucking goals. The only goal, it was four to one. The only goal I saw was when Japan all of a sudden cut it to four to two. And I was like, oh, fuck, is this like NHL hockey where no lead is safe anymore? And then the ladies came right back down and gave Japan the old right there, Fred. They gave me the old right there, Fred. Bam, shut the fuck up. Go home. Go home crying because you just lost. All right? Now. Let's look. Yeah, I actually, this is how into how, what a sports nerd I am. Even a sport that I don't even, admittedly, do not even watch. Or don't watch it nearly as much as I should. Because it is a beautiful sport. Especially the way the women play it. I actually prefer women's soccer to men's soccer. Why, you say, over there in jolly old England? Ireland, or where fucking Argentina, Brazil, Germany, all this we're fucking soccer Giants football, I'll tell you why I prefer it. Because the women don't dive every three seconds crying like a bunch of babies. Like when the women go down, like they fucking, you know, they got tripped up. And then they, they look at the ref like, what the fuck? You going to call that? I thought the women play, you know, they play a better game. They just play a better fucking game. I'm sure the men's is a little faster, fucking blah, 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 blah. But all the goddamn fucking whining and crying in men's soccer. I tell you right now, men's football players, you got to be ashamed of yourself. And that goes for you too there, fucking Rooney, or whatever your fucking name is there on Man United. All right? <clears throat> Looking like fucking... <laughs> I don't want the fucking... T- what the... Champ Sport, whatever the fucking character's name is. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, let's just fucking plow ahead here. Yeah, the women don't fucking cry every two seconds. But I will tell you this. What is fucking funny is when they lost 
Japan's goalie just started crying. I mean, the defense sucks. The defense had a total fucking meltdown. I don't know what the the ladies coach saw, but whatever it was, they exploited it fucking three times in the first five minutes. And the only bad goal was when they they actually shot one from center ice. And uh, the goalie looked like me playing right field when I was in fourth grade. Like, oh, it's going to drop in for a single. Come on, come on. Maybe, oh, shit, it's over my head. (laughs) Remember that when you totally misjudged it? Second hits the bat, you start running in towards the first baseman, and then, I don't know. And it's within three steps, you do that fucking just immediate stop, and then all of a sudden your head's back at a 45-degree angle as that ball just keeps going up over your head. That's what she did. And what's funny is she leaped up in the air, with the one hand to try to stop it. And when it went over her head, she just fucking landed on her entire backside. And you could already see her just going, fuck. And in the end of the game, I guess she felt that she cost her team the victory, which she didn't. It was absolutely horrific defense. She just bursted out crying, which is one of the beautiful things about being a woman. You know, when you look at a baby, all right, boy or girl, you know, they want something, you know, that's yours, something of value, and you take it away so you can't have that, and they want it. They immediately just, (laughs) they just start fucking crying. They're upset. They don't like what's happened, and they immediately, they just cry it out. Women can do that. Women can do that, and you feel bad for them. If a man cries Another man, the only thing you can do is just laugh in their face and tease them until they stop doing it because it makes you so fucking uncomfortable as a man. The only time it's acceptable is uh, when your friend blows his head off with a mortar round, whatever the fuck he did, at a, at a uh, you know, at a 4th of July party. And even then, even then, you know, you got to shake it off within a couple of Miller High Lifes there. You know? All right, Cliff, he's dead, okay? It's not going to bring him back. We still got all these beers. What is the difference if we say it now or in the morning? He's going to be just as dead in the morning. We're running out of ice. We got to finish these things. And you're like, <laughs> you're right, man. You're right. I'm sorry. You know, it's just like, why would he do that? <laughs> sorry. Um, she can, they, that's the thing about women. They can just fucking cry and we're not allowed to. And it's that combination that they are allowed to cry out their pain and we have to hold on to it. And the fact that they then turn around and nag the fucking shit out of us that they actually take 10 years off our lives. Do you realize that if women died 10 years before men did, can you imagine how much they'd be complaining about that? how much they would be blaming us for it. You know, when we say that we die, you know, men die 10 years early. They just blame us. Well, you know, you don't, you hold on to your emotions. You don't go to the doctor. Yeah. And and what about the cunt factor? Huh? Anything there? Can you, if I swear to God, if you turn the fucking tables and women died an average of 10 years before men did. All right. What color What pansy color uniform would the NFL players have to wear for an entire fucking month as they raised awareness? How much would they be blaming us? How many movies would Meryl Streep win an Oscar for playing the woman that was strong enough to die at the same time as the guy in her life? I don't know. You know what's funny about guys and the beauty of guys is we still we don't even give a shit. We die 10 years sooner than you do and we don't even give a fuck. It's the beauty of the simplistic man brain. Um, Anyways, let's plow ahead here. Uh, So women's World Cup soccer has been around since 1991. And as of yesterday, the United States of America, we've won the most. We've won three. And Germany has won two. Uh, Norway has won one. <clears throat> the death metal capital of the world. And Japan has won one. 
Japan actually won the last one. So we dethroned the champions. All right. Um, men's World Cup soccer. There's only been. So wait, wait. Women's World Cup soccer. There's only been five, six, seven times it's been played. All right. This is why I'm finally gaining respect for this. I always get had respect for the championship because the entire world does compete. But not only does the whole world compete, they do it every four years. So it's re- it really fucking means something here. And all these people around the world who are going like, yeah, Bill, you dumb fucking yank. It, yeah, it means something. Well, you know what? Maybe if it would, you guys weren't a bunch of fucking girls flopping all over the fucking place and you could actually pick it up with your hands. What the fuck did I, I don't understand a sport where you have four fucking limbs and you're only allowed to use two of them. Jesus Christ. It's like it's like it's like you're mocking the handicap the entire time I'm watching the fucking game. <clears throat> Anyways, sorry. So there's <laughs> there's only been 20 men's World Cups. All right. Brazil has won the most at five. Italy and Germany have both won four. And I got to give the nod to Germany as much as I love Italians. The way they dress, their food, their flashy fucking jewelry. I'm all about it. I love Italians. And I'm, I am fucking German. I got to give the nod to Germans because they won their first three with half a fucking country. They won their first one. Let's let me look this up. Let me make sure that I have this Correct. Um, they won their first one, I think in 1954. I mean, that's literally like, what is that? Like about nine, almost less than a decade. Yeah. They won their first one in 1954. World War II ended in 45, 46, something like that. 1944, maybe we'll say 45. What the fuck? Within nine years of trying to take on the entire world. And losing Dresden and bombs all over the fucking place. They they won a World Cup with half their country, West Germany. You know what I mean? I'm sure East Germany was actually in it too. Who's getting who? Germany is just, I mean, that is just a roid factory over there. 1974, they won it. They were they were on they were on they were doing so many steroids by 1974 that uh a lot of people don't know this. That West Germany team was actually 80% uh, women. A lot of people don't know that. East Germany, East German women, you know, they were so roided up, they didn't have to sneak out of the country. They just stared down the people in the guard tower and they were just like, hey man, I don't want any problem, bro. All you, all you. You want me to open that gate for you? Okay. Um, 1990, they won it. All right, let's get back to what the fuck I was talking about here. Um, where the hell did it go? Oh, there we go. All right, Uruguay has won two. Argentina, hand of God, won two. And then England, France, and Spain have all won one. And that is it. It's only been won 20 times in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight countries. Only eight countries have won it. So now I feel better. That the U.S. Has, men's have never won a fucking World Cup. You know? Most people giving a shit. It's like, well, how many did you fucking win? You've never won it either. And I love that I now know who's won it and who hasn't. So if I ever walk into a soccer sports bar, I know who I can talk shit to and who I can't to. What are you, huh? You from Brazil? Oh, Chile? Oh, go fuck yourself. You haven't won shit either. What's your big, what's your big feather in your cap that you care um, which makes the women winning three all the more impressive. But you got to give it up to Germany. Germany is uh, the only country that has won both the men and the world's and, and the women's. And they've won four men's and they've won two women's. And they're only off by one and both. You got to respect that. Jesus Christ. When is Brian Gumbel Real Sports going to be doing a what's in the water? What's in the water over there in fucking Germany? You know why they're not going to do it? Because we have a base over there and we already know what's in the water. A big vat of fucking steroids. I got to tell you, it's amazing, you know, to watch Germany channel all their hatred 
for other races and nationalities and, and put it into something more productive like sports. And look at the success that they've had. You know what I mean? That burning passion to incinerate people that aren't, that don't look like them. The fact that we've been sitting on their fucking chest for the last 60 years, they've had to, to, to focus that energy in different areas and they are dominating the world game of soccer, football, whatever. And look at the cars that they make. It's incredible. If you've noticed, all the fascist countries make the greatest cars. Germany. Fucking Italy. Who else? Finland. They don't make good cars. They make good phones for a minute. But look at them. Angry birds. They made those angry birds. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, they couldn't exterminate the people they didn't want to exterminate in their country. What did they do? They said, all right, what, what are we going to do with all this hate? Well, let's make some phones. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't do a fucking Finland accent. Actually, I, I give Finland a pass for being down with the H-bomb in, uh, <laughs> in uh, World War II. I, uh, you know, what were they supposed to do? You know what I mean? This shit was like, all right. Where we are geographically, you look to the right, you got Adolf Hitler with beads of sweat, his beady eyes and his fucking eyebrows. Und are you with us or are you against us? Right. And on the other side, they got uh, Eastern Europe's Tom Selleck, the one and only Joseph Stalin, or Yosef, if you're a history buff, staring you down, right? This motherfucker would sacrifice 100,000 Russians every day just so he could have fresh pineapple juice. I mean, this guy was a fucking maniac. They were, they were between two, they were stuck between two of the biggest psychos in the history of, of, of in modern history. All right? So they had to go with self-preservation. All right? Hitler, Stalin, equally out of their fucking minds. All right? So that's a wash. What's the next thing? All right, let's go with technology. German cars, what do we got? What do we got going on here? They got the Mercedes Benz. They got the Duesenberg. Did they make the Duesenberg? I don't know what the fuck they had. They had fucking, you know, they got, they got, they got, uh, they're making eight track tapes over here. Fucking 50 years before the guy, 40 years, 30 years before the fucking Bee Gees. What are we supposed to do here? They got real, real machines. You go over to Russia, what do they got? They got vodka. They, they, they got a goddamn fucking car made with a lawnmower engine spitting out blue smoke. And they, you know, they got, you know, they got those chicks with the fucking Lal Al Zeta arms. You know, by the way, Russian women have really come around, huh? Jesus Christ, they're fucking gorgeous now. Back in the day, during the Cold War, maybe those are the only women that they showed us. <clears throat> they all had those fucking Popeye the Sailor Man, boop, boop, fucking forearms. You know what I mean? From throwing calves over some fucking hill they weren't supposed to run over so whatever so finland goes you know what fuck it we're going with the h-bomb you know they went with him right flashlight gas chambers they fucking went with this maniac what were they supposed to do they fucking picked the wrong guy and you know what's funny was russia actually attacked finland and Finland kicked their fucking ass with no help from the Germans, as far as what I overheard in bars in Finland. And this is the funny thing. But they went down with the ship, with the H-bomb over there, right? They went down with that guy who fucking pussied out and killed himself in the end. This fucking broad, rather than going out like Saddam Hussein, talking shit as they put the rope around your neck. Even people heckling you, was still, you still had them on their heels. Huh? For me, that's like, uh, like when, you know, when people bring up uh, comics getting fucking heckled and that type of shit and people like to watch it. The ultimate one, like if I was a dictator, I would be looking at how Saddam Hussein went out and be like, this motherfucker here right there, right? And everybody, well, what about Hitler? You know, he killed all those people. Like that's probably respected with fucking, you know, dictators. Like, that's how many HBO specials you had. Like, how many fucking people you killed. They, but, you know, all evil people are going like, ah, oh, man, like his fucking amazing numbers that he had. It's like, yeah, but he went out like a bitch. You know? He went out like a bitch, just like Gaddafi went out like a bitch pleading for his fucking life. 
Saddam Hussein walked right up going, yeah, go fuck yourself. Fuck you. I'm going to come back. I will hunt you. Right? He fucking stared them all down. He didn't give a fuck. Standing there, stepped onto that thing, knowing at any second they could pull the fucking lever. He wasn't even shaking. He was staring them all down. Go fuck. He wasn't even nervous to meet his maker. That's one of the sickest things I've ever seen in my life. Um, what am I talking about? So they fucking, they beat, they beat the goddamn Russians, but because they, they picked the wrong guy. You know what I mean? That's like when you're in the wrong division in baseball. You have like back in the day, you know, you'd have a better, or when, the, when that year when the Patriots went 11 and five, but they didn't make the fucking playoffs. That's what, that's what fucking Finland did. And they actually had to give, a, even though they beat the Russians, they then had to, they still had to give him some land. How fucked up is that? Oh, war. All right. I hope some of that was even just remotely historically accurate. I have no idea. As long as it was entertaining. Did it entertain you? All right. So anyways, I had, I had an amazing weekend. I had an amazing weekend. Um, I, uh, you know, I had some family uh, came in, and for the first time ever, I... Uh, I gave a helicopter ride to some family members. I went up with the fucking uh, instructor, though, because I'm not a moron. But we did this great flight. Uh, we flew out of Long Beach. We ran around the Palos Verdes Peninsula. It's great, man. You fly right over the Queen Mary. And then you go around the peninsula. And as you go around the peninsula, that's when you start realizing how many goddamn things are in the ocean, even though we fucking fished them out. And we started going along the beach, and I thought they were dolphins. And my instructor's going, no, those are actually baby great great white sharks. They just haven't reached the predatory stage yet. And I swear to God, there was like five of them. Um, and there was one, and there was all these people frolicking in the fucking water, and there was this one jackass who had swam beyond where they were. Um, they were perpendicular to him, but he was further out into the ocean. They were closer to the beach. I hope I'm explaining this correctly. And he was swimming out to like a buoy, like that naked chick in the beginning of Jaws. Um, yeah, I've said it a million times. You're out of your fucking mind if you swim in the ocean. If you don't believe me, take a helicopter ride. Have him fly 100 feet off the fucking ocean. I know what you're thinking, Bill. Oh, Jesus Christ. What? The, how fucking... Not say, yeah, they have a 2,200-hour fucking overhaul. It's a brand-new helicopter every 2,200 hours. Go fuck yourself. What I'm doing is infinitely more safe. All right? Um, and then we, we uh, made a right turn at the Ferris wheel on Santa Monica Piers. We flew over Santa Monica, over Beverly Hills, right over fucking Aaron, the Aaron Spelling Mansion, which is the most ridiculous house ever built that I can think of. Do you know that house was so big? I saw a thing one time. They did it on the Aaron Spelling House. They actually have a room in there just for wrapping gifts. They have a gift wrapping room. You know what I mean? To me, I always thought that for the people who do American Horror Story, like that would be a great place to do one of those things. People that are that level fucking rich. And then somehow the ki- the children and the poor people that put together all the things that they wrap in there somehow come and haunt them. I have no idea, but feel free to send that to the producers over there so they can fucking laugh you out of the goddamn room. Um, and who doesn't like watching a fucking rich person get haunted and die a horrific death? I mean, that's just fun. I mean, that's a fucking home run right there, American Horror Story. You know? You don't have to give me any money. All I ask is if you use it, just give the Monday Morning Podcast a fucking shout out. That's all. That's all. Just have somebody tell somebody else to go fuck themselves and have them wearing an orange wig. And I'll be happy right there. That, that'll be enough for me. Um, all right. Plowing ahead here. Uh, and the Playboy Mansion is right to the left of it. Then we flew up um, to the Hollywood sign over the observatory, did a lap around Dodger Stadium. And then my favorite part ever, we flew up Route 2, banged the left, up and over the hill, and where is it? Oh, daddy, the granddaddy of them all flew over the fucking Rose Bowl, and then went right back to right down back down to uh, Long Beach. Um, it was fucking awesome, man. We flew in what's called an R forty four Robinson forty four. Someday, you know what I mean. Someday, I'm, I want to get one of those um, when I get a little more uh, confident, and I also have 
the kind of money to blow on a fucking helicopter. I imagine I'll have to drug my wife on some level. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, variables as a man to buying a helicopter, like the amount of fucking money and, and hand, as they said on Seinfeld, the amount of hand that you, you got to have hand in a relationship that you'd have to have to actually fucking justify buying a helicopter when you really have nowhere to go in the thing. <laughs> so anyways, Dude, get a used one on fucking Craigslist. Them things are awesome. Um, all right, so guess what? Last night was my last cigar and my last... I'm taking a booze break. Old Billy Clean Cakes is back in the house. I got a nice round white belly from, uh, you know, grilling, drinking. I had a great fucking weekend. And I manned my own grill. Manned my own grill, as a man does. Even if you don't know how to do it even if you 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 risk giving the people at your party e coli it doesn't make a difference you are a man and you fucking you man your own goddamn grill um i i kept it simple i just made burgers and and uh hot dogs and what's fucking amazing is we got this butcher um in the next neighborhood over from us and they make their own you can order homemade hamburger buns and hot dog buns they made us like the hot dog buns they came in like uh it looked like ribs except they were hot dog buns and you had to cut them to separate them and then cut them again to make them you know to split them so you could put the hot dog in it was fuck i felt like it was like the 1920s or some shit you know what i mean everything was homemade and boy oh boy was it refreshing um so anyways uh let's get to um let's get to some of the questions here um for this week yes so i am i am announcing it on the fucking podcast because uh that i am not drinking or smoking or anything like that so i will stick so you guys will hold me to it so i don't have to hang my head in shame next week and tell you that i fucked up all right so oh here we go i finally got my advertising here for this week it was a little bit late um all right all right here we go what do we got here i'm coming up on an hour all right uh Quote, retard. Bill, as a mom of three, count them three mentally challenged kids. Uh, what? You have my permission to use the word whenever you want to describe idiots at your show. I don't want permission. I don't want to use the word. I don't want to hurt people. Okay? But I reserve the right to every once in a while if I flip out and I drop the fucking word in a moment of anger because I'm standing there in front of a fucking drunk who won't shut up. I still expect you to give me shit about it, but just accept my apology and know that I don't have anything against mentally challenged people. I just was pissed at this person and I made a mistake. That's all I'm asking. I'm not asking for a license to use the word. I don't want to use it. Jesus. All right. Orzo. Response to mentioning Orzo last week. Orzo last week. Uh, Red Bill gives you wings. Hey, there's a new one. Uh, Tell that woman of yours to get back in the goddamn kitchen. Orzo is a pasta shape, shaped like rice, not a grain. Christ alive. But seriously, love Nia. Her appearance is the best part of the podcast. Well, fuck you. I like to think I bring something to the table. (laughs) Um, Oh, that's great. I'll have to let her know that. Orzo is a pasta, pasta shape, is pasta. Oh, Jesus Christ. Orzo is pasta shaped like rice. Dude, I really have a fucking learning disability, man. I can't read words. I can read them. I just can't put them to. I said it's a. I said orzo is pasta shaped rice. <laughs> I don't even what the fuck I said. Orzo is pasta shaped like rice. You know what? Anybody who listens to this podcast has got to be at least as dumb as I am. Let me fucking look this up. Maybe they're right. Orzo. Orzo. Up, well, Wikipedia says it's pasta. See, so you, you, you gotta, you gotta think it's true. Orzo, it's Italian for Bali, from the Latin, also risone, is a form of shortcut pasta shaped like a large grain of rice. Orzo can be served alone as a soup accoutrement, as part of a salad, or pilaf, or giovesti. Or bacon a casserole. What's Giovesti? I want to go to Italy. I want to go. I want to go to Florence. 
Oh, Jesus. Look at what the... F- Italians are the best, man. What the... F- oh, that's Greek. My apologies. I want to go to Greece. I don't want to go to Greece right now. Hey, I didn't, I didn't even see... How the fuck did they vote? Did they vote to fucking let their, their, their goddamn banks just fail? That's what they should do. They should just let everything fail, and then, then everybody's money isn't worth shit. And then you know something? Those bankers got to come out in public, and then you fucking stab them in the gut like that dude at the beginning of Scarface. All right? Libenga, libenga. Uh, Greece, vote. Let's see. Well, come on, man. Come on, Greece. You know they didn't. Markets resilient after no vote. Uh, and we always pussy out. We always pussy. Everybody always ends up pussying out. You know something? Only fucking Iceland has had the balls to stand up to their fucking bankers. And you know what? I hope I'm wrong about that. And if I am, please tell me who else has. All right. No idea where to start. Dear Mr. Burr, I'm a 16-year-old high school junior from a rural town in Mississippi. Just a good old boy. Never meaning no harm. Getting a confederate flag birthday cake every fucking six months. Cause his parents are too dumb to know what a year is. You're not even 16, buddy. You're really fucking eight. Sorry, that was totally stereotypical and I shouldn't have done that. Um, Now that I'm nearing my final year of high school and will soon be having to decide where to go to college... I've realized I have no idea what I want to do with my life. The only two things I have interest in is writing and stand-up comedy. Oh, those are two phenomenal things. You can make a hell of a living. I flunked everything in high school. Uh, But here's a few places from where I live. But there's a few places from where I live where I could do something like an open mic. Jesus Christ. But you know something? This should inspire you right, right here. How awful I am at reading out loud, yet I've been able to do something in this business. You know what I mean? I'm able to make a living, and and I can put frosted mini wheats on the table for my family of one. Um, the only two things I have interest in is writing stand up, but there's few places from where I live where I could do something like an open mic or get honest opinions on my comedic writing. I'm writing to you ask where, in your opinion, would be a great town for starting for starting comedian to start. Uh, also, if you think someone can juggle college in a stand up, do you think someone can juggle stand up in a co- uh, college in a stand up career? I would truly be grateful for your advice and also go fuck yourself. Um, all right. Any place is a good place to start. Just start. If there's an open mic, I would drive as long as I had to drive to go to it. Um, let's see. You're in Mississippi. All right. What do I. What do I know about down there? I mean, the closest scene that I know of from Mississippi, Atlanta, Nashville, uh, Texas. Houston was always a great comedy town. I don't know what the open mic scene is like. If anybody, anybody, any comedians out there starting out? Anybody, anything going on in Alabama? What's going on in Mississippi? Right in. Give this kid some fucking advice. Uh, tweet me about it. I'll retweet it. That's the easiest way to do it because we might not see your emails because we get a bunch of them. So just tweet me about it and, uh, you know, at Bill Burr on Twitter. And um, if you got some good advice, I will retweet it. Um, can you juggle college in a stand up career? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you can do whatever you want to do in life, dude. You can do whatever you want. That's the one fucking thing. Everybody, you know. You know, because people want to make it, they try to look at what is working for the most people, and then they they get locked into that. I, that's the biggest advice I can give you: is do not get locked in to what everybody else is doing. Get locked into what's going on in your fucking chest, whatever that thing's saying. Like, do this, unless it's saying to shoot your neighbor. Don't do that. But if it's you're doing something that's not going to hurt somebody, like writing jokes, telling them, writing a script, yeah, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. And the fact that you're 16 and you're already are listening to yourself you're way ahead of the game so um and you have the intelligence to understand that you know hey i need some help and you reached out for it keep doing that my friend and i hope to see you out there give it a shot you know but i would i would i'd write five minutes of shit tonight and then sign up for an open mic somewhere and within the week i would start 
do it. And that's unbelievable balls to be able to do that at 16. It took me almost to 24 to get the balls to do it. So my hat is off to you, sir. Or ma'am. I don't know who you are. All right, here we go. Girlfriend has prejudiced parents. A Billy Billy Dingleberry. I'm a white man who's dating a black woman. She's the greatest thing that has ever happened to me, and there's no doubt in my mind that I want to spend my life with her. Well, congratulations. Until now. Dun, dun, dun. We've been dating for 10 months, and I finally met her parents this past weekend. When I got there, they seemed shocked by my skin color, almost like my girl hadn't even hinted to them that I was white. Well, that's probably what happened if they are fucking racist. Um, the whole dinner was very awkward. I wasn't being looked at in the eye, and I was left out of most of the conversation. Didn't they make a movie about this? Ashton Kutcher in the late, great Bernie Mac. I even tried talking to her dad about music since we are both musicians, but he just kept giving me short answers like he didn't give a fuck. After the whole thing was over, my girlfriend said that they didn't like that I was white. Uh, she said that they wanted her to have strong black babies and not to dilute the bloodline. <laughs> also, uh, they spouted a bunch of other shit about how much trouble we'll run into as an interracial couple. It has been four days and we still haven't talked about it, nor has she told her parents off for being prejudiced assholes. I truly believe this is the only situation where a white person can fully understand what a black person... Well, I don't know about that, dude. Wait. You get you get you get a little sprinkling of it. Uh, a black guy with a microphone on a street corner can call me cracker all he wants, and I won't lose a wink of sleep over. But when you're told uh, the person you love is wrong and invalid, that's like a kick in the balls. Anyways, how should I go about addressing this? I'm assuming you didn't run into this problem with Nia. No, I didn't. Make maybe she could weigh in on this as well. Anyway, thanks and go fuck yourself. Ah, uh, Jesus. Um, I would, if you love her, I would stay with her. If, if you questioning it, I'd pull the rip cord. Cause that's just going to be a fucking nightmare. That'll end up being a nightmare. You know what I mean? You're going to be, you're going to be in a relationship where you're waiting for the other person's parents to die. Sitting there going like one down, <laughs> two down, you know, that's just the fucked up, you know, you really, when you're going to get married is you have to, uh, I don't know. I mean, who the fuck am I to say? I waited so goddamn long, so I'm not an authority. But, you know, if, you, if you're with somebody that's fun, you know, and they come from a good family and their family supported of you guys, I mean, that's so much of the battle. Actually, you know, something this past week when I was in Vegas, somebody came up to me and said, hey, Bill, I, let me, I got to ask you a question. Who makes you laugh? And without even thinking, I said my wife. And it made me feel really good. Like, ah, it's great. You know, my wife's a hot shit. She makes me laugh. We have a good time. Um, and uh, so, I don't know. She might not be bringing it up because she's embarrassed about it or whatnot. Um, I have no idea. But, uh, I mean, that's going to be a hell of a fucking situation. If that's how they're going to view their grandkids. I mean, that's kind of... Uh, that that's a major fucking situation where I would at least want to see where her head is at, and then you throw out certain scenarios about the future. So how are we going to handle this? And blah 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 blah. Um, you know what? Uh, I'm sorry you're going through that, dude. But you definitely need to have some fucking conversations. I would think. I would definitely think some conversations that are in order. All right, Colin Farrell movies. Hey, Billy Redskin, uh, Colin Farrell has done a couple of great movies since Phone Booth you sh that uh, you should like, namely In Bruges, Bruges, I don't know how to say it, and Seven Psychopaths with the always excellent Sam Rockwell. Oh, Jesus Christ. I got to see Seven, seven, Psycho seven Psychopaths. I got to see that. Um, you, could give, you could give them a look. All right, coming to California next year from Ireland on holiday. Hope to see you in action. All right, well, I hope you make it out to a show. All right. Yeah. So I got hit with a wave of fucking tired. All right, that's the podcast for this week. Go fuck yourselves, and uh, I'll be checking in on you on Thursday. All right, see you.